What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Absolutely April, here for another recap. We are doing my favorite TV show, Grey's Anatomy. And I have a lot of thoughts. A lot of stuff has come out in the media about um, Grey's Anatomy and Meredith. And so we got a lot to talk about today. But before we do that, I do want to thank everyone for tuning into my channel. If you're new here, I do recaps on reality shows, um, TV shows, movies. I might have some spirituality tips for you. So if this aligns with your spirit, if this aligns with who you are, come on in, subscribe to my channel, join my community, join the tribe. Um, I love to get opinions and I love to hear your feedback. So come on in. And while you're here, you might as well go ahead and like the video. Get me put in that algorithm. Yes, it's free to like and it helps me and I appreciate it. And also, Sharon is Karen. Share the video with a friend. Also, you might as well also hit the notification bell so you'd be notified about all of my uploads. You watch everything that I watch, so you might as well come on and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified about all of my uploads. And if you're returning to my channel, thank you. I appreciate your support. It gives me the drive to continue to do this. And I just really appreciate you. And that comes from my heart. So let's go ahead and get into the video, child. Oh, Grey's Anatomy. I feel like the end is near. Ugh. And I hate that. I do. I really, really hate that. Um, it's just not, I mean, because y'all, I mean, we all knew that Meredith was going to take a, uh, Ellen Pompeo, um, the actress who plays Meredith. She is, she already said she was going to take a reduced role. Um, she was having some type of Hulu show coming out so she was going to take a like a little step back from grays but we ain't talk about her leaving grays all the way so i don't know y'all i don't know how i feel about this i don't know about the future of grays anatomy because if there's no narrative there it's going to be hard to keep this show going along it's got to be something i mean an old person coming it has to be an og person coming back and it can't just be jackson in my opinion it has to be someone it has to be something like Christina or some, something that's going to keep them engaged. It, it can't just, I mean, Meredith was the glue that brought everything together. So without her being there, I just don't know how this is going to work. So hopefully this is just, you know, people are taking stuff and running with it. I don't know, but it's just, I don't know. It seems like we're on season 19. I mean, I feel like we should give it one more season. If we're going to go out, let's go out with the season 20. Don't go out on the season 19. That just doesn't seem right. It seems odd. And it's an odd number. So let's let's go ahead and try for one more season. Like Meredith, Ellen Pompeo, producers of Grey's Anatomy, just give us one more good season. We need a season 20, but it needs to be a, di a dynamic season 20. We need some OGs back. We need we need some stuff. We need we need something to help us with, with what's going on because you can't leave us hanging like this. You can't just, you know, throw it out there that merit of gone and we just got to be okay with it. That is not right for your fans. And you know, I mean, the Alice Karev whole situation, he did that to us and just left with a, a letter. I'm still not right about that. So, I mean, no, we can't, we can't do this. So we got to figure it out, go back to the drawing board, but Meredith has to figure out another way to leave. And I feel like a season 20 would be a perfect way. So there's that. So let's get into the episode, y'all. I didn't write any any notes, so I'm going off the dome. So I may miss some things. So comment down below if I miss some things and some things you may want to may have wanted to discuss. Um, it starts out, you know, somebody, you know, somebody is coming into the. Really, it starts out. I believe it started out with um, Amelia and. Um, Luke are in the elevator and as, as they're in the elevator they're going back and forth you know and he you know she's talking to him like how was your night or blah 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 so they're making like small talk in the elevator and you know he's saying that he still hasn't done what he was supposed to do um which was he needed to tell his t um the rest of the interns that, that is her his aunt and not his girl so 
as an elevator door, you know, everything happens in the elevator on Grey's Anatomy. So when the elevator door opens, we see none other than the interns. I believe it was Yastuda, 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 and Quan, I believe. And um, so they were like, yeah, you know, we know what's going on between them and they're smirking and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, a bit, as they're walking out to go to the skills lab, you know, your student makes a little comment like, I'll let them know that you're going to be a little late, you know, because, you know, you got some things going on. Like she, you know, everybody's, just, you know, making these innuendos and assuming that they know what it is. And but they're trying to, I guess, lightweight put him on blast. Like, yeah, we know and we're going to say, you know, we're going to say it around. We already know what's going on, which they really don't. So Amelia is like, oh, no, uh, -uh we're not doing this. <laughs> this this has to this has to come to an end. It's just first of all, it's nasty because that's his, that's his eye. And second of all, it's like, come on, it's at this point. Why are we still here? Why are we still discussing this? So meanwhile, another um, patient who um, yeah, a patient came in. Um, it was probably a season 19 mashup, and I don't really watch season 19. I haven't really gotten into season 19 for some reason. So I believe it was some type of mashup. So shout out to Hulu. Um, Hulu always has grades in um, in season 19. So I'll probably go back and check check it out and see what actually happened. But um, <clears throat> a a patient came in. I think he was struck by lightning or something, and he was he got impaled. And um, he was in a chair. I'm not really sure about the, the the specifics of it. I can't I can't remember. But it was it was definitely a situation where if y'all remember, I can't remember what season it is. But you remember when the the two um, the lady and the man. It was a white woman and the black guy. They were um, they were impaled together. I believe that's when the windstorm. I think it might have been the windstorm or something. But they were you know mashed together on like a little. Um, wire so they would so if they move one person it, you know one the other one was gonna die so that it kind of reminded me of that so whole situation and so and also the fact that you know dr weber got electrocuted so um a lot of these things are kind of like bringing me back to that but <clears throat> yeah so they bring they bring in this patient in and you know having to you know handle what, what, you know, what's going on with this patient. So meanwhile, at the skills lab with Dr. Marsh, Dr. Marsh is upset because Luke, the, some of the interns are late and they're saying that, oh, we were late because of the storm that happened. So he's annoyed. And he's just like, yeah, you know, if, if other people can be on time, you could be on time. There's no excuses. So I'm, I'm with Dr. Marsh on that. Like you, you can, you have to kind of like, I know when I was on the band, my band director, one he one thing he used to say, when you're late, when you're when you're on time, you're late. And when you're early, you're on time. So you always need to make um you you need to make a, you know, some you have to come, you know, make a what am I trying to say? You 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 do need to make take accommodation of what is going on. So if you knew it was bad um bad weather, it was something that happened, you probably should have, you know, went out early. So Nevertheless, off my soapbox, Marsh is upset that they're late. And so at that particular time, you know, he's giving a lecture and the, he's also telling the the interns that because Meredith sent a whole letter, you know, saying that she was quitting and she was, you know, moving to Boston. So it has the whole hospital up in an uproar because what does that mean for us? So the interns is like, I just got here and now Meredith Gray is leaving. What does that mean for us? So Marsh, who, you know, Meredith is his, his girlfriend. You know, Meredith, you know, she, like Christina told her, you know, in, on season 10, like you are the son. So Meredith has really taken that, that advice to heart and she knows that she is the son. So I guess, I don't think she even took Marsh into consideration. She was just like, I got to do this for my kids and we'll figure it out. And so Marsh is kind of feeling like, ugh, left out. Meredith is, again, making the decision and not including me. So I'm pretty sure he feels a little bit annoyed with Meredith at this point. But at, he's also over the residency program. So he needs to kind of, you know, quell 
you know, the frustrations and the anxiety of the other interns and telling them that, you know, everything is going to be good. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing, you know, nothing is going to be different. Everything is going to be okay. But I don't know if everybody totally believes that. And I don't even know if Marsh believes that, actually. So now we get into where, you know, Luke is coming into the skills lab and he is late as well. So he's, you know, he's saying he's late, but he comes in with Amelia and Amelia is like, we, I have an announcement. So she, you know, interrupts the class and Dr. Marsh goes in and said, go ahead and say what you got to say. So he has to let them know. Um, and this is the scene where he lets them know like, hey, I know some rumors have been swirling around about me and Dr. Shepard. And, you know, they, they're back there making comments like, mm-hmm, yep, yep. It's, yeah, we know. We know what's going on. We already know. And he was like, the whole thing is, this is her, how do you say it? He said, my mother is her sister, <laughs> basically, instead of just saying that's my aunt. And, and then he was like, you know, I'm a, she I'm a shepherd, basically. So everybody is like taken aback, like, oh my God, is this what it's been the whole time? Like, that's your aunt? Like, okay, now we were totally wrong. Quan and your students back there eating crow because they thought they knew what it was, but it really wasn't. So, you know, Amelia also lets them know, like, hey, you know, yeah, I'm his aunt. It's not nothing like that. So they're looking at him. This is the same way, you know, they're listening, listening at the whole situation. And, you know, that's not the, you know, I am not with my, with him. He is my nephew. And so Marsha's like, got it. Dr. Marsh is like, yeah, we got it. That's your nephew. So he, I guess he didn't really know what the Romans were. So he was like, why are we making this a whole big declaration? But Amelia wanted to set the record straight because who wants a rumor out there that you're having sex with your nephew? Like, that's just nasty. So Amelia wanted to set the record straight, which she did. And now everybody's eating crow. But now Luke feels a little bit inadequate because now the pressures of being a shepherd and being related to half of the hospital is now the pressure is on. And before he could kind of, you know, hide under, you know, an uh, Adams, a Luke Adams. But now he has the pressure of, oh my God, you're a shepherd, so you should be a lot better than what you are. So it's just, it's a lot. And it's, it's you know, it's a weight, but he shouldn't allow that to, you know, really, you know, he's going to get there. I mean, he should know that that's his, he has a natural ability and you're here as an intern. You're not here because you already know everything, but I get it. It's a lot, you know, it's a lot of weight, you know, behind a name like Meredith can relate because of her mom. And we know the struggle she had with, you know, just having that last name of Gray because they knew that she was related to Ellis Gray, who was a two time Harper at that time, Harper Avery Award winner. And um, so that was a lot to have to live up to. But Meredith had to eventually make her own way and make her own name. So. It's a lot, I, I can imagine, but he has to just kind of take the bull by the horn and just like, look, I am who I am. I'm here to learn. I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to make a name for myself. So moving on, after that, um, Winston and Maggie, I don't have a clip for that one, but Winston and Maggie um, end up talking, and they... Um, she, you know, she's helping Meredith pack up because they're going to Boston. So Winston, you know, Maggie is an avoider. You know how Maggie is. When her and Jackson used to have issues, what she do, she run. And the same thing she's doing right now. She's running because her and Winston are not on the same page. So she's running and she's going to help Meredith. At, she runs to Meredith's house, which, you know, that's her safe spot to go and help with the kids and help pack. But Meredith has a Whipple <laughs> surgery. So she's kind of like, I gotta go. And so, you know, she's like, nah, stay here. And, you know, let's, you know, try to keep her mind off what the issue is. And she, you know, tells Meredith that, you know, her and Winston are not on the same page because Winston now wants to change specialties because he no longer wants to be in cardio with his wife because it's causing issues. And Maggie doesn't know how to deal with it. And Maggie sees it as quitting versus, you know, I'm trying to do something for my marriage. So 
Meredith ends up leaving because she got she got things to do and Meredith is a surgeon and she likes to cut. So she's she's like, yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. If you want to stay here <laughs> and pack, you can go ahead, but I'm going to do my whipple. So Maggie's there packing, helping with the kids. And of course, Winston comes and he's like, you're not going to continue to run away from me and run away from the situation. I'm going to help you pack and we're going to talk. So Maggie is so uncomfortable with the whole situation, but she just see she she sees him as quitting versus, you know, versus and doing what he loves because she could never see herself doing that. She's like, I love cardio. This is what I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. No matter what, this is what I do. I wouldn't change my specialty for anyone. Um, and he's like, look, I can't work with you. It's causing issues in our marriage. And there is a new um, residency opening up for a vascular surgeon. So I'm going. he's going to apply for it. And he says pretty much he has the backing, everything that he needs to go ahead and get um, chosen for this res residency in vascular surgery. And Maggie is just like annoyed with that. She can't see what it is. Now, my, my opinion is I get it. And I think that's, you know, being a good man about the whole thing. I think that Maggie is overanalyzing as she uh, does a lot. Um, at the end of the day, that's your husband. And if y'all are not good at working together, you should let him do that. Like Bailey had to allow <laughs> Warren to make all of his different career moves. She she had to be okay with it. And you know, when he went from being an anesthesiologist to becoming an intern, and then once he went into his residency, he changes to become a firefighter. So it's kind of like you have to kind of take the reins off your husband and stop trying to control him. If it's a wrong decision, he's gonna have to deal with it. And you just have to be there to support him through the whole thing, even when you think it's stupid. Um, but he has a good reason for wanting to maybe, you know, take a step back because he's like, you're annoying me and you're my boss. And then you come home and then you try to boss me around there. Like it can't be <laughs> like we need a separation of church and state. So I get it. So now moving on, Richard, um, find Richard Weber, Dr. Weber, he finds Dr. Marsh and like, okay, we all know that Meredith leaving. I know you love Meredith. I know y'all together. Now, do I have to expect a letter of resignation from you too? And then he finds, you know, Dr. Weber finds like, yeah, I hadn't even, that Dr. Marsh hadn't even talked to Meredith about it. So now he's trying to figure out like, okay, now what do we do from here? And he said, I don't even know. I can't even give you an answer because I haven't even talked to her and she hasn't talked to me about it. So I don't know. And he's like, I, I can't even give you an answer at this point. So Dr. Weber is like, you need to give me an answer as soon as possible because I need to know what we're dealing with. I need to, I need to be able to put some, some measures in place. So after they have this conversation, here comes Owen, because you know Owen and Teddy, they still arguing, they still ain't seeing eye to eye. Because um, earlier in the episode, you know, the babies arrive. Owen has the, you know, two kids, Leo and Allison. And Teddy's like, hey, how are you? And so he says, you know, Owen's like, yeah, we're doing good. And she said, I wasn't talking to you. And I'm like, Teddy, come on, like, let it go, girl let it go like it's, it's like i get it he put y'all in the financial bond because of y'all decision but you made vows for rich and for poor so and i can get being annoyed with your husband when you just like you got me in this situation but are you gonna die on this hill teddy like are you gonna really just make it miserable for the both of y'all like it just does not make any sense to me so she's still mad at owen so Owen goes to um, <laughs> to Richard like, look, I know y'all need a chief at this point. I have quality, you know, because Owen used to be the chief of surgery at one point in time. And he says, like, look, let me go ahead and step in. I know there's a need. And Richard Red was like, how you going to step in and be chief of surgery and your license suspended? Like, we can't do that. Like, we're, that don't even make sense. So he basically has to shoot down Owen. So, um, you know, so now they're in the, in the running for who could possibly be the chief of surgery. Now, I thought about Owen, but I, you know, I quickly let go of the whole Owen situation because Owen is not, you know, not a good, he doesn't have a license at this point. Then you can think about Bailey. 
and, and Richard went to Bailey, of course, trying to entice her into doing the surgery. You know, I think he enticed her with another surgery to see how he could butter her up and get her to do, you know, go back to being a chief of surgery. Um, Bailey already clocked Richard because she knows Richard very well. That's her work husband. And she's like, no, I'm not about to be, no, I'm not about to be chief of surgery. I am doing the, the, um, the clinic. And I'm going, that's where I'm staking my flag. I'm not doing nothing else. Don't even try it. So, and I agree. I feel like Bailey, and comment down below if y'all think this, I feel like Bailey is a lot lighter. Like she's a lot more, she's less stressed. She just seemed like this is her lane. And, you know, Bailey has always been like, a, you know, a general surgeon. She's always been at the top of her game in surgery. But this is somewhere that she can, still do surgery and also do a passion project, which is the reproductive health and all that kind of stuff. So I'm glad Bailey didn't get in. I'm glad she's following her heart. So I'm, yeah, Bailey's off the table. So I know Teddy, um, I know Owen Bright brings up to Teddy, like maybe you should go out for cheaper surgery. I guess Teddy would be all right because you know when she was in Germany, she, you know, she was, I believe she was the director of cardiothoracic or she was the director over the whole thing, but she has the administrative background. <sighs> but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't see Amelia doing anything like that. I, I think Amelia just likes to be in her neurosurgeon bag and that's how she's going to be. Um, and I, and I know Jackson Avery would come back because I know, you know, they've been talking about Jackson Avery. Um, yeah, no. You know what? But I don't know if she would ever come back. But I think that April Kepner would be a good, uh, if she would come back or if they would, you know, come, you know, bring someone back. April Kepner would be a good chief of surgery. I think she would. I think she would be a great chief of surgery, but I don't know. I ain't heard no rumors about her coming back, but I really do. If they had to bring someone back, I would say April Kepner would be a great chief of surgery. Um, yeah, I can't think of anyone else right off. Um, I, I mean, I guess if we had to get Teddy, it'd be fine, but I'm not overly enthused about Teddy either. Um, who knows? I don't know who they would get to be chief of surgery. Um, or would they get someone totally new? You know, who knows? Who's to say? Alex Correa will come back. You know, I know Alex ain't coming back, but still. I, I think that, you know, ooh, that would be, that would be very, very, like, that would be something serious. If Alex Correa came back, that would make it uncomfortable for Joe. And then, you know, her feelings for, you know, Lincoln and Lincoln's feelings for her. And then, you know, Alex bring Izzy and the babies. That would be good. But I know Alex said he's done with Grey's Anatomy, so I don't think that's going to happen. So let's get back to the episode. So where are we? Weber is looking for a chief of surgery. surgery. And so... At this point, and Dr. Marsh is helping with, he has to help with the Whipple. And um, Luke and Griffith are the interns that's gonna help with the Whipple. We ain't there yet. So Luke and, Luke and Griffith who are messing around, well, they like each other a lot. And um, so she's gonna help with the Whipple. So they've been studying on, you know, all the different, things that could go wrong, you know, all the different aspects of this Whipple surgery. So they've been practicing together. Um, so Marsha is going to be in there for the Whipple. And this is married a patient. And this happens to be like one of these authors, like a famous author in Seattle. Um, so Griffith also has her books. Meredith got her book, you know, the book signed for her kids. So yeah, this is somebody that's really important to Meredith and very important to the community of Seattle in Seattle. So they're doing the Whipple and um, you can tell the tension between Marsh, Dr. Marsh and Meredith is like palpable. Like they can, you know, you can cut the tension with a knife. He's like being snarky with her. And you know, when Meredith is in her surgery bag, she, you know, she, she's oblivious. Like she's not trying to, she's not letting her emotions take over. 
So, you know, Mars is uh, wanting Luke, like he's giving Luke a pep talk, like no matter what, what your last name is, who you are, you're here to learn and just know that you can do it. Regardless of who is attached to you, you can still, you still can make a name for yourself. So he um, he's helping with the surgery. Meredith was like, is he ready? And he was like, yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm going to help. You know, he kind of like cut Meredith down. And so, you know, Luke keeps zoning out. Like he's not totally there. And Marsh is trying to, you know, motivate him and coax him to keep going and, you know, to not let what happened earlier to get in under his skin. But whatever it is, he can't shake it. So Meredith is like, uh-uh. He got to go. So he moves, <laughs> he moves, um, she moves uh, Luke out of the way and calls Griffith, Griffith in because she also knows the surgery. So Griffith comes in and assists with the Whipple and Luke has to sit on the sidelines because he's just, he's not focused. So, you know, at this point, Luke is mad. Um, you know, Griffith is on a high. She's, she's in, she helped with the Whipple. But then Luke is, on the other hand, he's upset because he allowed his emotions to get to him. So they were about to kiss and it didn't happen because Griffith was just, you know, she, I don't, something's probably going from something that happened in the past, but I feel like she's also focused and she doesn't want to be taken off focus either. So that's where they are with that. But while they're doing this Whipple, y'all, Meredith gets a call. And she gets a call um, about her house is on fire. So Richard comes in and like, uh, take your hands out the body. <laughs> and it's been a fire at your house. So immediately she's like, my kids. And they was like, he said, I don't know anything else, but you need to get out there and go see about your house because we heard that there's a fire. So she, Meredith gets out there, she scrubs out and goes to see, you know, what's going on with her house. So her house, the top of her house is in flames. Um, and she's like, you know, she's just looking, you know, like my house, you know, what the hell? Like what's going on? My house is on fire and, you know, the firefighters, they all know Meredith Gray. So they're like, you know, we're going to do what we can to salvage everything, but we can't tell you anything at this point. So Maggie gives Meredith um, something that, because Winston and her were, you know, packing and they came across the post-it note. So the post-it note is if you are, if you are super fans of Grey's Anatomy, you know, Meredith and, and um, Derek Shepard, they did a, you know, their vows on a post-it note when they couldn't make it to the courthouse. So that's how they technically became married. And she, they always kept their post-it note over the bed. That was a symbol of their vow and their, and their, um, and their commitment to one another. So they will always call post-it note. If something was going wrong in their relationship, they'd be like, I call post-it. So, you know, you, they had to always, you know, bring, bring their vows to, into consideration. So they, it was, it was saved, but I don't know what else in that house is saved because, you know, it was, you know, this Meredith's childhood at home. So is there a lot of stuff from Ellis in that house, a lot of stuff from her kids, a lot of memories with Derek. So in my mind, I was like, well, whatever happened to the, you know, the, the house that Derek built? Like, where is that? Like, what happened with that? Whatever happened, like, you know, there's another house. So I'm like, well, if anything, if anything goes on with that house, they can move back into the house that Derek built, if it's still there, because I've never really heard anything else about it. So that would be good if they brought that house back, because, you know, it has sentimental value, and it would be a place you know, that they can, you know, always come back to if they needed to. Um, hmm. So that was a good thing that she has her post-it note, but Meredith is just kind of like, you know, she's just like, ugh. she can't believe it. You know, she can't believe her house is literally on fire, but this is also the house that everybody stayed at. Like all the interns went her year. She stayed with Izzy. Um, Alex has lived there. Jackson has lived there. Maggie has lived there. Amelia has lived there. Um, it's been like so many things has happened in this house. So just that I'm hoping this house can be salvaged, honestly, because this is, house has been a staple for Grey's Anatomy and all the people who come in, like that house has been a safe haven for everybody. Um, Darius lived there. So everybody has lived at this house. Callie lived there. George lived there. Like it's just, 
everybody has lived. Lexi has lived in this house. So it's kind of like this is the house that basically is the glue that has kept a lot of the people together and that has formed a lot of friendship in the bonds that everyone has had. So yeah, Link has lived there, you know, when during the COVID pandemic um season. So it's it's a lot. So I'm just I mean, I'm seeing the, you know, I'm seeing that we're at the end of the tunnel when it comes to Grey's Anatomy. Um, I'm sure Ellen Pompeo is, you know, exhausted with playing it. Um, and she probably wants to spread her wings and do other things. I can, I can just imagine. And, but, you know, me as a fan, I feel I'm like, no, you can't go nowhere, girl. We still got stuff to do, but it's... <sighs> It's bittersweet, y'all. I, I really see um, Grey's Anatomy is coming to an end. And I can't stand it. Like, you know, I'm going to be bawling and crying. Ugh, this is just not what I was looking for. Not what I was looking for at all. I was hoping that it could keep going and going and going, but all good things must come to an end. So this basically is the episode and what happened. Um, comment down below what are some of your thoughts about this episode. I will probably rate this episode maybe a seven. You know, is you know, it's the buildup of what is inevitable about Meredith leaving. So I I can't stand it. It's annoying. It's annoying to me at this point. So, anyways, like I said, comment down below. What are your thoughts? Would you rate this episode? Um, if I missed anything, also comment if you wanted to dis if I um, missed something that you wanted to discuss. I thought I hit everything um, without any notes, so I'm kind of going off the dome. Um, but again, if you made it this far, you might as well. If you haven't subscribed, why haven't you subscribed? Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Get me in the algorithm and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified about all of my uploads. And again, it's a pleasure coming to speak to y'all again. Till next time, I see y'all when I see y'all. Peace.